Hello, good night, Calvary Assembly family and friends. This is Pastor Hanif Bacchus. Welcome back to Let's Build a Bridge as we build a bridge back to the heart of God through studying of the Word. Amen. So we're back on a series of Acts of the Holy Spirit based on the book of Acts of the Apostles. So get your Bibles out and let's get started. So good night again, and we're back in Acts chapter 13. I'm going to pick up from verse 4 and go down to verse number 12. I know I read the scriptures the last time, um, but we did the uh, exposition on the first four verses. So I want to pick up from there and keep going forward. Amen. Um, today, Tonight I want to talk about challenges arise in ministry, and I want you to know that I, we need to emphasize that. The people who walked with the Lord and put their hands in the ministry, there's so much joy, there's, there's a lot of blessings, but challenges do arise in ministry. Get ready for that also. So here we go. Let's start the reading here in verse number uh, 4. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. You remember we talked about this the last time, but Barnabas was born in Cyprus, and he was the leader of the team at this time. So I suppose that the decision to go first to Cyprus was him saying, I need to start at my Jerusalem. So you guys, my team, please come with me. We're going to start my home first. That's an awesome thing to do. You and I need to start in our own home, praying, loving our people, uh, wanting to see them get saved. Don't take them for granted. No matter how long it's been, they're not saved as yet. Keep going after them. Amen. Don't be an annoyance to them and, and you don't have to, uh, you don't have to fret with them, but just love them. Just love them. Keep talking to them and let them know that you are praying. You want to see them get saved. So that was that. Verse 5. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews. They had also John to their minister. When they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, the false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, uh, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimus the sorcerer, it's the same person, Bar-Jesus, uh, for so is his name by interpretation, which stood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. Thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Remember, we talked about how Luke um, listed this as a blurring of the vision and then total um, darkness. Verse 12, then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. And that's important for me to make mention to you that he believed being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. So listen, miracles are a sign that points to something. The sign is not of any value by itself unless it tells you a message. It gives you a message and points to something else. For example, so if there's a sign that says you're welcome it, it means that you're welcome to come inside. You could, you could come in because uh, there's a, a nice warmth for you there. It's, it's going to be a pleasant uh, surrounding for you to come in. The, the sign is pointing to something. Amen. If the sign says, uh, don't go there, then you know what you got to do, right? Signs point to something else. These signs and miracles are pointing to the resurrected Christ that he is alive and he is powerful and he loves people. Amen. So, uh, but what's more important to salvation is believing on Jesus Christ. Amen. The signs point to that. The, the, uh, the deputy here believed when he saw what was done 
and he was astonished at the doctrine. The sign of the miracle was consistent with what he was teaching about the resurrected Christ. Folks, listen, we need the word of God above everything else. When you believe, you will be saved. Amen. Believe the word of God and you shall be saved. Now, let's talk about this. First stop is home. Uh, Paul's first missionary journey is now underway. Barnabas is the leader and he brings him to his home place. Eventually, you will notice later the order changes to Paul and Barnabas. When we come now to uh, uh, verse 13, it says, Now Paul and his company loosed from Paphos. Paul becomes the leader of the team now. And so um, you will notice this change. Barnabas recognized God's call on Paul and took a step back to play second fiddle. That's not easy to do. It takes a lot of maturity and sensitivity to God to recognize what God is doing in somebody else's life. And so you can give them the preference so they can fulfill what God wants them to do. And by doing that, you're also fulfilling what God has for you. One of the confusing things is to find somebody trying to fit a role that they don't belong in. And uh, you know what we say, you put a square peg in a round hole and uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't fit well. So Barnabas took the place of second fiddle. Mark, of course, was quite young at the time. Mark became, eventually became the gospel writer of the gospel according to St. Mark. This is the same guy that did that. I would think that Barnabas chose Cyprus because that was his hometown and he wanted to start at his Jerusalem. The custom was for Jews to start by visiting the local synagogues and they would be invited to speak and that's where they started. Um, synagogues here, you'll notice where it says in verse 5, um, they preach the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. It's multiple here, plural, meaning there was uh, obviously a large Jewish population on the island. So let's come to this now. Satan opposes the gospel. After Salamis, they went to uh, Paphos at the west end of the island. The Roman proconsul, he heard about these strangers, requested them to come um, to him. He wants to hear their teaching. Obviously, the soil of his heart was being prepared by the Holy Spirit, who also leads the team to bring the seed of the word to plant in that heart. Isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit works, preparing somebody to receive, preparing you to bring, amen, and when the seed is sown, it grows and it multiplies. It's awesome. So, uh, but there was an obstacle here to overcome. Uh, it's typical of the devil's strategy. Bar Jesus appeared to be some sort of advisor to the Roman proconsul here. And uh, uh, Luke refers to him as the sorcerer, which means magician also. Can you imagine this man has a name of son of Yeshua and he has an evil heart in him. He doesn't live up to expectation. Do you know anyone with a great name that misrepresents that name, doesn't live up to expectation? Well, uh, the name Saul, which was uh, obviously connected somehow, not, not, I'm not talking relative connection, but um, it was Jewish because we know there was a Jewish, another Jewish Saul, which was King Saul. He was named Paul after his Latin name, a Roman name. Now, I know of people who have come to the United States and they bear new names, they change their names. Uh, probably to be more relevant or whatever the case might be. Um, but Paul, Saul now adopted the name Paul, which would make him sort of more adaptable and suitable and fitting in to the Gentile world. Remember, he is the missionary to the Gentile world. All right. And so it probably is going to make ministry more accessible for him. Even to this day, people change uh, their names. Bear in mind that he was born Jewish in a Roman city of Tarsus, a Jewish man born in Tarsus. That will play out later in the book of Acts. Both names would be comfortable for him. Paul was anointed to sow the seed of the word in the heart of the proconsul. 
So the Spirit moved him to pronounce judgment against Elimus, who would become blind for a city. Uh, I, want, I want to encourage you here, we're not to go around uh, calling judgment on people who reject our message or reject us. But Paul was very obviously anointed by the Spirit and prompted by the Spirit to do that on that occasion. Paul never doubted the Spirit's uh, prompting to pronounce it because he would remember his own experience, how he became blind on the road to Damascus. So he knew if the Holy Spirit says, pronounce blindness on him, he knew it's a possibility it can happen. Unfortunately, nothing here suggests that Elimus or Bar Jesus um, became converted. And that's unfortunate that the, uh, the Roman proconsul became converted. He and his family became converted. But this man who was touched by the power of God was not converted. We are told that uh, Sergius Paulus and his household became Christians. And notice that it was by the doctrine of the Lord, by believing on the doctrine of the Lord. So all those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believe it, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's not so much by the miracle. Uh, we don't win people by judgments, but by the love of Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in him. I want to talk about the gospel moves forward. Verse 13, let's go on to verse number 13. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia. So they left the island of Cyprus and they've gone to the mainland in Asia Minor to the, a little town called Perga in the region of uh, Pamphylia. What's Pamphylia? Well, in Queens here, we have various districts. Uh, we have the Jamaica district, uh, Richmond Hill, Ozone Park, you have Jackson Heights and uh, many districts. In some places you have provinces and so on. In Asia Minor, there were these, you might call them counties, if you like. There's Pamphylia. Galatia was a county of many cities. Um, then there was Pisidia. We'll talk about that also. We'll get to Pisidia just now. Another county. There were several like that. So Perga a little town in that county, county, so to speak, of Pamphylia. And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. I want you to take notice of this. This is John Mark. He left them here at Perga, and he went back to Jerusalem. It's going to be a point of contention later on as we come in our studies. Now, we don't know the real reason at this point why John Mark left them. Some people think that because of his youth, he was young and inexperienced. He grew up in a city of Jerusalem, not in a country area. And he was not able to handle the hardships and the adversities and challenges of the travels and going into these um, little towns for the work of missions. Missions can be challenging, I can tell you that. I've been on some mission trips myself. And I've come up against some challenges, but I had to adjust myself. I've had to eat some things that I wouldn't normally eat. And I know of missionaries who do all sorts of things. Sleep in places where you wouldn't normally want to sleep. That's what missions is all about. To take the gospel to people who need to know about Jesus. And to know that Jesus loves those people. And this is what he's asking you to do for him. So John Mark left them and he went back to Jerusalem. Verse 14. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia. Pisidia being another county and this town of Antioch. It was a main town. Notice that this is another Antioch. It's not the same as Antioch in Syria, which would eventually become the new headquarters of missionary activity, of Christian activity in that region. This is another Antioch in Pisidia, in Asia Minor. And went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, You men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. 
Now, I'm not going to read on too much in the rest of this here. I want you to do the reading. Open the Bible. Read through this. It's very, very interesting. I'll give you the summary of it. So, uh, as we close that chapter, they moved into this region. Luke switches the leadership to Paul. John Mark has gone back to Jerusalem. We're not told the reason of his departure, but we will come up against that later on, again, in in an incident in chapter 15, when we get to chapter 15, we'll come up against that incident again. Then the team moves to Antioch in Pisidia. They attended synagogue meeting, as was the usual thing to do, and uh, the leaders invite them to speak. Paul, being knowledgeable of the Old Testament, and of course with his experience with the living Christ now, he knows who the Messiah is, began to show them, and as you read that through, you'll see this, how God made covenant with Abraham, and then the time of the captivity in Egypt, in the enslavement in Egypt, the bondage, and then the deliverance. And they came to the land of Canaan. And then God gave a covenant to David, a promise that they would come someone out of David that will be the ruler of Israel. And Paul began to show them that this was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, John the Baptist introduced Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. And John said, I must decrease now and he must increase. Jesus was crucified. All this is covered in Paul's presentation. But God raised him from the dead, proving that he was the Messiah. Verse number 30 here is a key part of the speech, a key part of Bible doctrine, along with verse 39. Watch what it says, verse 30. But God raised him from the dead. And verse 39, and by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So Paul begins to explain to the Jews here in Antioch of Pisidia that through Jesus Christ, your sins can be forgiven. This man died for your sins, according to the scripture. And God raised him from the dead, proving that he is the Messiah. And this was presented to them. The resurrection was confirmed by eyewitnesses. Verse number 31 says they were eyewitnesses to the resurrection. And then we come to verse 42. Hallelujah. Here's what it says. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So there was obviously a Gentile gathering also in the synagogue. And when the Jews left, guess who was happy to receive the gospel? The Gentiles. Verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Hallelujah. So the Gentiles received the great news. Verse 50 says, But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. We can read into this a lot of things. Why did they stir up the women? And these were influential women. Well, I'll leave you to guess on that. I have my own opinion also. And, uh, and so after that, the chief men of the city joined in the protest. They brought persecution against them and expelled them out of their coast. Notice what happened here. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came onto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. The last verse pertains to Antioch that when Paul and Barnabas were expelled, the church became strong. They were full of joy and they continued living for the Lord, spreading the gospel. Amen. 
So, but listen, I'm, I'm trying to show you in this lesson today that opposition comes when you present the gospel. The devil stirs people up to hinder the progress of the gospel and to keep souls in captivity. But you and I are called, you and I are anointed that we should go out there prayerfully in the power of the Holy Spirit, that we should release those captives, present the good news that they could believe on Jesus and they can be saved. Oh, I tell you, families are changed when the gospel comes in. Many lives who were supposed, who were destined to be destroyed and damaged, uh, they, they are changed, wonderfully changed. God can take people from the guttermost to the uttermost. God can take people from nothing, make something out of their lives. If you and I would only be obedient to take the gospel to them. Will you always have success? Will you always come back rejoicing? I don't think so. Because remember, broad is the way that leads to destruction and many go in there. But straight and narrow is the road that leads to life and few there be that find it. You will go out there and you might be rejected by many. But there are those who need Jesus and Jesus wants them. And you are the connection between Jesus and that soul. Don't fail to do this. Rise up and do what you can for the glory of God. So it was a blessing. It turned out to be a blessing. Watch this. The persecution arose and they moved from there to Iconium. Do you know what's happening here? The Holy Spirit is moving the gospel further. When you think persecution is a bad thing, it turned out to be a good thing that they could move on to another city with the gospel. So what looks bad was not all that bad. God can use you powerful despite your circumstances. We need to maintain a good attitude towards people and faith in God's promises, whether the sun is shining or the rain is falling. Glorify God in all circumstances. Hallelujah. Praise God. So although your favorite preacher, your friend is not there. God expects you to continue strong serving him faithfully as the church in Antioch. As you serve faithfully, blessings will abundantly be your portion. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Let me pray with you today, my friend. Hallelujah. I hope that you're enjoying these studies as I'm enjoying them also. And I hope that your heart is being stirred so that God can push you to do more for Him and increase your joy, the blessings you bring to other people. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, thank you for this day that we can study the Word of God. What a joy it is to discover that as Paul and his team went in spite of opposition, Lord. They were not discouraged, but they reached new towns, new villages with the gospel. There was great joy as the word of God grew and multiplied. Families were changed, God. Help us, God, that we will wait upon you, listen to your voice, and wait for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, that we should go forth and do the same, that we will see more people get saved before the rapture takes place, O oh God. Thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, I pray for the needs of people that are joining this study, individuals and families. And I ask for the power of God to touch their lives, oh God. I pray for healing for the sick. I pray that you would destroy the yoke of bondage and every work of the kingdom of darkness and bring deliverance to people's lives, oh God. Transform hearts, Lord. Redeem those that, that man may think is beyond redemption. Bring back those that people might think nothing can come out of their lives. Raise them up to be great for you, O oh God. I want to thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Well, I hope that you enjoyed and you're blessed by this Bible study tonight. Praise God. Don't forget to like and share the video. And remember, our regular services will be Friday night, 7.30 p.m. prayer meeting. And Sunday morning, two services, 8 a.m. and 10.15. All of our services are both in person and online. And don't forget, Sister Shanti and I love you. Stay blessed. Stay safe. God bless you.